So what's the first impressions in this edition 30? Um, <laughs> the noise. Wow. The exhaust, it is a real bassy um, noise, resonates both inside and outside, but you can definitely hear it and it's very, very distinctive. Um, doesn't actually sound much like a four pot, to say the truth. The ride quality is for considering it's got the lowered springs the ride is really nice now this is quite a smooth road i'm on here but i will be taking down a few lumpier bumpier b roads and see what it handles like then and when you lift off you can hear the whoosh of i think though that's probably the wastegate currently got the dsg just in auto just as I coast along and get temperature into that engine first. So as I come out of this 30, I'll just give it a little opener up a little bit here. So 30 miles an hour is 1400 revs. So just literally ticking over in auto and let's just see how this so just drop it down oh <laughs> wow. so what is really really you're at 60 very very quickly so there's a bit of delay um, in kicking down and that's probably because DSG's as I say it's an older system now um, and don't forget it's still in auto and then you just got this what feels like a tr tr torrent of torque Interestingly, the DSG is changing really quite low down, three, four thousand revs, and it's keeping you in that two, three thousand rev range. I'm assuming for maximum torque, um, and a wall of this power and noise as it and it's spitting and popping as you're going up through the gearbox. It's free, it's quick, this it's quick. believe how low down the seat goes I'm a six foot guy I've, I, I've got I must have six eight inch above my head I feel almost like a midget and I'm this is not my sort of normal driving position but it feels really snug I just feel like the cars wrapped around me I, I can't see anything at the front I feel everything's sort of up at head height it's quite a unique driving position. They've done really well to get these, these seats so low down in the car. So one of my favorite B roads this, see how it takes it. I'll just knock it into manual actually, just so I've got control. Six speed it is. It's fourth gear, it's got some mighty power. Feel what those brakes are like. Brakes feel strong. <laughs> knock it down second gear bite that initial turning trying to get power down double up shift fourth gear oh those brakes are mighty bits of damp and wet down this road the the power that this puts down it's really serious sounds absolutely intoxicating the paddle shifts behind the steering wheel working really really well I mean the steering's not the most communicative steering but you there's no denying it turns in and it's sharp enough just knock it back into auto really really struggling then to get the full power down but the wash of the wastegate and the um the turbo it's intoxicating driving experience this this is awesomely quick
put it into manual. So second gear, about 15 miles an hour. And let's just see what it goes like. Oh, it comes on turbo. It's just wheel spinning. And it's quite dry down here. And then we're bordering illegal speed. Knock it back into auto. That's, um, that's really quick. And I suppose in its day, the standard 200 brake horsepower, you could argue that the Edition 30 with 230, that was par for the course for sure. This is when the Civic um, Type R's were sort of 200, Focus RS's, 2, 220. That was the ballpark. What this Stage 1 remap, Artec remap has done, is brought it back up to modern day performance. I mean, this has got some true acceleration. It's, it is struggling for traction in the dry in second gear there. Very wet here and very potholed. The lowering springs, what I thought may make the ride too harsh, bouncing around. It looks the look nice, the aesthetics of the lower ride, but on this very badly surfaced road, it rides the road really, really well. The chassis can cope with it really nicely. There's weight to the steering. If lacking a bit of feedback and the turning, it all feels at one. It feels like a genuine hot hatch. And it's something you probably couldn't say for the two generations before the Mark V. The cabin is a really nice place to be as well. It's holding its 100,000 miles very, very well. The only real telltale signs are around the DSG um, plate. Um, there, the black sort of coming off, it's cracking a little bit. But other than that, the actual leather, the, the, the fabric seats, the steering wheels not become too smooth, all the touch points are actually very, very good. And that, that shows you Volkswagen build quality. So when Archie was looking at buying a Mark V, and he was particularly after the Edition 30, I didn't really get it, I suppose. Um, I, I've never been a massive Volkswagen Golf fan, even though both Aaron well, and now Archie, both, and um, my other, my third son, Jamie, all three have now owned Volkswagen Golf GTIs. But it's the, it's the, it's the resale value. They've got this cult following. Volkswagen have done some, something that very few manufacturers can do, that loyalty. And then it's not just about the value of the Golf GTI, but it's the Edition 30, the premium that you get. Yes, I understand the KO4 Turbo is much stronger, it's more tunable. It is the better turbo, it's the one that everybody wants. But for double the price, now of course you can get some really clean standard ones and some rough and ready Edition 30s, but generally speaking, with the research I did, the Edition 30s are commanding about double the price. That's a lot. But Arch has put his money into this car, and to tell you the truth, I don't think it's a bad decision, because I would expect, with the following that V-Dub have got, with the transition to EVs as we progress through this next couple of decades, you just think, are these, although not low in number, you just think the following that they're gonna have, the Edition 30s, the money's safe in one of these, and say Arch is paid in and around 8,000 8, for this and you can get them a couple of thousand cheaper, a couple of thousand more expensive but, but this is a clean tidy one and the mods it's had done to it I think aesthetically with the low ring springs the, 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 the power, the extra performance you're getting in the brakes these S3 brakes are doing a great job um, 
a little bit, maybe a little bit too bitey, but once you get used to them, you can just modulate them a little bit easier. Um, and the DSG gearbox. If you want to go semi-automatic gearboxes, then at this time period, you cannot go wrong with the DSG. For me, it was better than BMW's SMG, better than Porsche's Tiptronic. It was the best semi-automatic gearbox of its time. Another great road here, knocking into manual. It's one of these cars, I think I would use the manual. Just all that whoosh of noise and third gear, and it's popping and it's banging, but it's, just feel the turbo spinning up. But it's the steering, it's sharp, it's accurate. It might not be giving you loads of feedback, but it's giving you enough. Wow, it's really putting that power down. Of the upshifts, that bang as you go up the upshift, it's pulling really well. And with the paddles, it's just, it's really, really quick changes. Twin clutch system, the DSG. Just wants more straights, really, to feel all that power. Bad road here, it's getting knocked about a little bit. So there's not much steering feel. But it certainly, it turns in quick enough and those brakes are phenomenal. Give it a... <sighs> it's a great car and it's a fast car. But is it stupidly fast? Not really. I mean, yeah, I'm struggling here today to get full, knock it back into auto, to be able to deploy all that power for very long. But it, it feels it feels just about right. It's not stupid. There's a little bit of wheel spin. As I say, I got wheel spin in when I really went hard in second gear on dry tarmac. It, I would imagine it's a bit of a handful in the wet, but it just all adds to the experience. Well, this car may struggle for traction at times, deploying all that power, especially if it's slightly wet or damp. But the grip levels through the corners, we were pushing on then and it's really holding really, really well. And I think a lot of that is because of the compliant ride. It's got a great setup. And especially on these lowering spins, there was a risk that it just detracts away from natural grip and, and, and compliance, but not at all. It both looks good and rides the road really, really well. So how do I summarise my few hours in this edition 30? Well, the noise. I get young Archie wanting a loud pops and bangs and, and I don't mind that myself to a degree it's not valve you can't switch it off and the problem is once you get up to certain speeds it can become a little bit drony and it can be at times just a little bit too obnoxious and in your face so for me quietening that down would certainly help I think the other negative for me is still what is paid for this car it's still a sizable premium over a standard GTI so the upfront cost, these are expensive cars for what they are and for the year of them. But I suppose that's the, 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 the positive to that is they are likely to keep and remain strong with their residuals. What do I love about the car? Well, there's a few certain, certain highs for me. The performance, it's not too much. Whether it's 290, just under 300 it feels every bit of that it's entertaining it's fast it's quick but it's not stupid and you can absolutely try to exploit it on the road and it brings huge fun the DSG gearbox not so much in auto but I think in manual it's a joy the, the, the flappy paddles behind the gearbox uh, behind the steering wheel work really well 
the changes are instant. They bang up and down the gearbox and it belies that this is old technology. And aesthetics. It's a smart looking car. Those BBS Piscari 18 inch alloys offset against this black three door with the subtle Edition 30 decals plus the inside the way these tartan half leather half tartan cloth seats look it's a really nice place to be I'm sure this is going to feature on many more videos this year I hope you have enjoyed it if you have as always please thumbs up subscribe stay tuned another video next week thanks for watching guys